Good morning from Medellin. We are very sad to say that this is our last day here in Colombia for now, but we wanted to still explore some of the city while taking a more relaxed approach to it. So we have heard really good things about a very popular and kind of bougie neighborhood called El Pablado. Apparently it has some historical and cultural significance and it's just a really nice place to go and walk around. So that is the plan for today and we are going to take you with us. Let's go! And for our first stop in El Poblado, we are here at the very aptly named El Poblado Park, which is also the site of the Church of St. Joseph, which is just over that way. As we mentioned before, this particular neighborhood does have some historical significance, and now we're going to tell you why. So this is actually the site where the Spanish first settled in the Abura Valley in 1616. So this would have been the center of Medellin had they not moved it in 1675. The location they moved it to is present Barrio Square in downtown Medellin. And there's kind of a sad reason that they moved it. It's because there was an indigenous population living here and they didn't want to live in the same community with them. So that's why the center of Medellin is where it is now. Now to continue on and see what else we can see. We've now come to the part of El Pablado that we've been hearing about, which is full of cafes and restaurants, all of which look absolutely wonderful. But we came here for a very specific coffee shop. Our friends Joe and Kat, who run a blog called Walk My World, which is absolutely huge and fair play to them, they're very good at what they do, recommended a place called Cafe Velvet, and that has been echoed by a number of other blogs and articles that we've seen about this part of Colombia. However, unfortunately it is all closed down and it's been replaced by something else. So we have opted to come here to a place called Simon Coffee to try their stuff instead because this comes very, very highly rated. So I have a regular flat white, Rachel has a flat white with oat milk and we're going to give it a go. So cheers. Cheers babe. This is our first like proper bougie coffee here in Colombia and probably will be our only one. I'm very glad it was this one. It's so good. We are now here in Arquilleras, which is also known as a Zona Rosa. And what that means locally is that it's kind of a main nightlife hub. So it's where a lot of the restaurants are, a lot of the cafe clubs, which are more referred to as discos here, and stuff like that. This is where a lot of the social life of El Poblado and the rest of Medellin happens. You can really tell that this particular area is modern and upscale 
which when you think about the history, it makes sense because El Poblado was incorporated into Medellin in the 1950s. And since then, El Poblado has actually grown into the center of industry and commerce for Medellin. And it's because of El Poblado that Medellin has actually become the second largest economy in all of Colombia. And as an additional note then, like there is a bunch of street art and they've really kind of spruced the place up to kind of match the expectation of the atmosphere here and as a result it's beautiful to look at. After walking around El Poblado though I am quite hungry okay. so I think we're gonna go and try some more local food because you know that's what we like to do. Okay, so you've now tried both. What is your verdict? So, unlike Nick, who loved the triple cheese, and don't get me wrong, it was awesome. My favorite was the corn that I love for two reasons. One, I love the cold cheese versus the hot corn arepa. Number two, I liked the salty cheese with the sweet corn arepa. So, those two elements that were opposites, I just loved how it all came together in one. All three arepas came to 23,000 pesos. I don't think we're planning on exploring anything else today, so we're just going to head back to our Airbnb. Okay, so we are now back home in our apartment after having explored a little bit more of El Poblado. What did you think? That's an interesting question for me because most tourists stay there and I can understand why because there are a ton of Western amenities in terms of restaurants, cafes, pubs, and so it would be quite comfortable to stay there. But I got the impression that other than maybe eating your meals, there's not a huge amount to actually do there or explore historically and culturally other than what we kind of saw briefly. Whereas I feel like where we're staying, the downtown area, we just have so much local food that is cheap and delicious at our doorstep. And as I previously mentioned, food really contributes to my enjoyment of a new place. I really feel like I'm able to immerse myself through that. So for me, I wouldn't change where we stayed, even though it's not as popular for tourists. What about you? I would agree. I think while El Poblado does have a lot more of a polish, which I know would really go down well with tourists from the likes of Europe and North America, there's a lot of kind of creature comforts that you would be used to back home there. I personally feel like with the way that we like to travel, which is to really immerse ourselves as much as possible in like local culture and try and kind of branch out from the norm, then definitely the way that we've done it, I feel like, is probably the better way. Like, yes, when we came in, like our taxi drivers and people like that kind of were like, oh, it's a bit unsafe, so you gotta be careful. But honestly, I don't think we've really had any kind of issues, which has been lovely. The people have been super friendly. The food has been amazing, and probably some of the cheapest that we've experienced here in Latin America so far. 
and in terms of having a launch pad especially considering the fact that there's a subway station or the five to ten minute walk just down the road this has actually ended up being a really good decision and i think it's worked out for us in our favor based on how we like to experience a new country i agree now Overall, when we're talking Medellin versus Cartagena, and the reason we're kind of getting philosophical and summarizing is because this is our last day in Colombia. I don't know if this is controversial to say. I don't mean to offend anyone. It's just personal preference. It's personal preference based on the things that we enjoy most, mm -hmm. because I have enjoyed Medellin, like Comuna 13. That is worth coming to Medellin alone. Mm -hmm. But I just preferred Cartagena because I love history and I found their downtown area particularly historical but it makes sense because the Spanish were based there they weren't based here so the fact that they had their old city as well as Getsemane which I guess you can compare to Comuna 13 just meant that overall there was more that I was fascinated by there yeah when we were in the old town of Cartagena I just felt comfortable coming from Europe then my family and I spent a lot of time in Spain and there's a lot of Spanish architecture around especially near where we were staying and so it just felt kind of familiar and kind of comfortable from that perspective just because it was very like what I'd already seen before and so while obviously it is a completely different country and you know there are different customs, foods, all of that kind of stuff. It still felt very comfortable to kind of just move around and enjoy, and that was really, really cool. So I think that kind of really shaped my experience at Cartagena. And then beyond that, checking out Gethsemane, which is unlike anywhere I've personally ever been before. And it was so unique, but the energy was so incredible there. And you can really tell that all the locals have such a pride of place, much in the same way as Camino 13 here. To me, kind of as an overall package, Cartagena for me was my preference too. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that one should be skipping over here. This is still a very important part of Colombia to visit. Comuna 13 in particular is awesome. Guatape is stunning, or if a little bit more on the tourist side. Being here as an experience was really cool, not least because the pricing on everything was a little bit cheaper as well. So we could get a little bit more bang for our buck by way of food too. We understand that this is just our preference. If you go around Colombia and you find something that you prefer, then by all means let us know. Like we would actually really like to come back to this country because we've really enjoyed our time. So if there's something that we've maybe missed outside of the two places that we've been to, or if you want to try and prove us wrong, feel free. We'll be more than happy to hear from you. So feel free to leave us a comment with your opinion either way. Just for anyone who's considering coming here, I would basically say that Cartagena is full of old history, mm -hmm. whereas Medellin is more newer history yeah. through the 1970s all the way to maybe like even 2010, and both are equally important. So I think that's a really good way to look at it. Yeah, we do have every intention of coming back. This was a really good first experience. We've loved it and we would love to see more. But we will be moving on to another country here in Latin America. We are absolutely pumped to go there. Me in particular, because it's my first time going. You've already been before. But I'm pumped to go back too. Absolutely. And we are going to be traveling there tomorrow. So we will see you then. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling.